Hi guys and welcome to this week's review and uh, this week's review is on the Approach G80 by Garmin. It's um, a GPS much like a lot of the other GPS devices out there. It's got a nice screen on the front that you can see and uh, it's, the construction's pretty good. Nice rubbery piece on the back there. But also it has a nifty little feature as a launch monitor. So you, when you're in the, maybe on the range when you're warming up, you can set some standards for yourself to get yourself going, or you can see how quick your clubhead speed is that particular day. Or when you're out on the golf course, you could throw it down and see how it's performing and how you are swinging. I took it to the course so we can see how that has gone on out there. And um, I'm gonna do a quick run through here to show you all the different features in case A, you own one of these, or B, you wanna buy one. Right, so we get to the fifth hole here. I've just been kind of having a little demo myself on the first five holes here at Celtic Manor. And this is what we have in store. So when we open the actual screen itself, focus on that. This is the hole. We've got 453 yards. This is the, the obviously the hole that we're playing. See our layout quite nicely here. We've got, um, once you move your finger around on this hole, you can see where some of the problems are where you might hit, want to hit your tee shot to steer clear of things. Maybe we go to this, this is 296 leaving 122 into the green. Maybe you want to lay back here, 220 which leaves you 201 in. And you can basically see a lot of sort of danger areas and we can zoom in and zoom out and get a little bit closer if we want to with this zoom in and out down here. So basically that is what we've got to look at on each hole. Okay, so here we are. So we've got to the golf course and this is the approach Garmin G80. So um, down the left hand side, we've got these two buttons. We're gonna hit the top one, which is the red one and hold it. And then it's gonna open us up. And this is our first page. We've got um, start new round. We've got our warm up, tempo training, target practice and the virtual round. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go start new round. Let's go for a golf course that I know pretty well. Let's go down to... Now this area would come up with the golf course that you're stood on or the nearest one. I'm not particularly close to any of these golf courses at home at the moment, so it's gonna ask me just to whip through them. A golf course, now at this point, I'm not sure whether you can or not, but I would like to just plug in the golf course name. And I can't really see anywhere at the moment that enables me to search. Now it's fine when you get to a golf course and you just stand there and up it pops, but so there's Russell on my golf club, I'll click on that. I'll select a tee, so I'll go men's tees, and that's the first hole. Now what we can do is we can just tap at the top here and we can go to any hole we like. So I'm gonna go to the tent, which is a good example of a hole that I know well, which you need to be a bit strategical on. This line through the middle, you can set for your average drive. You can put that in. If you know what your average drive is, then that will move up and down dependent. Once I tapped on the screen there, we're into this view. Now, this is where I want to kind of zoom in, but I can't do anything with my fingers. So I have to do that, and then I can zoom into this area. Now I'm going to tap on the screen, and it moves around this little dot to show us where we want to go. So I'm going to go back out for a second. Now, I know here is a gap that I know that if I hit my driver, or if I hit uh, maybe a three wood or a three iron, I wanna make sure that if I overdraw it, because down the right hand side is completely dead, but there is a gap over here that you can drive into, which does allow you to draw up onto the green. So here we go, it's a good example. I just go to that area there, find out what it is. Let's just say it's about there, 238. Now I would do all my yardages on that number and make sure I don't hit over that number because if I do I'm going to end up in these trees if I pull it a bit. So I've, I've basically got that little gap there to, to dial from. So that's a good example of how this can be used. Let's just say we're going to try and hit it to there and then we can see now the yardage we've got left into the green. Okay so that's the tee shot that I'm looking to hit and that's the yardage is into the green. Now I can go here to have a closer look at that little gap there if I'd like. So when we go back to this view, we can tap on this little icon down here 
and it will show us the green. So we can, if we can see where the pin is or we got a pin sheet beforehand, we can set these flags up so we can get exact distances, uh, exact yardages. So let's go back out. So that's pretty much an overview. Now, so top left hand side here, we've got the, the hole. So that's number 10. We've got the par, obviously. This is the yardage. And up here, that is the yardage to the back of the green and, the back, and to the front of the green. Okay. And that's pretty much all we need to know. So um, we can have a quick overview of the hole. It will come up with it nicely. And when we walk to the next hole, it then goes on to the next hole. So all those things are good. Now then, so when we tap down here, we can enter the scorecard. Now I love this mode. This is really good. And you can also write down for your four different players and it will keep a scorecard for all of them. That is brilliant. We've got the time down here and the distance that we've traveled so we can see how far we've walked and how long we've taken. So that's a really great feature. I love that feature. Um, the other thing is that we can do down here is we can end, enter tournament mode, which means it, it won't give us our, uh, to our slope distances to the green. It will just give us our normal one. We've got our big numbers, if you can't see it quite so well, so that's quite good as well. And we can save locations and we can measure shots. So what you do is you tap, if you hit a particularly good tee shot, you can tap on it, hit your shot and then tap on it again. It will give you the distance up to that shot in itself. That's pretty much all you need to know on this section. So we get to the range and we decide we want to have a quick warm up. Now this is the great feature about this little piece of kit. So we've got the estimated carry at the top here. We've got the club head speed, which is really important. We've got the ball speed and that the ball speed and the club head speed works out the smash factor just to work out how well you actually struck it. So, and the last one is we've got the tempo of your swing. So this is really great. They've got the estimated um, carry roll and they've got the estimated carry there. Now this is great because we're gonna put this just down, just short of the golf ball by a grip's length and just hit your ball. And it will come up with all these distances. And you can access this anytime when you're out on the golf course by just pressing this button at the bottom here. So as well as a pretty handy GPS, when we're out on the golf course, if we press this, press this button on the right hand side, and it flicks to this, which is a launch monitor. And it will show us our club head speed, our ball speed, our smash factor, and our tempo, and the estimated carry. So, we put this down next to the ball, and uh, we've got our launch monitor here. So, we're just gonna go for that. We're gonna pop it down there. It's about a grip distance away. I'll hit my shot, and let's see if it works. See if we get any stats off of this. Okay. Club head speed 105 mile an hour, ball speed 148. We've got the carry of 239, smash factor, did in it very well, 1.41. So I'm not really sure how that helps you out on the golf course. Really this is gonna be something for the range. So when you get into your little shot lab at home, or if you're on the driving range, you wanna try and hit specific numbers. Then it's actually pretty, pretty good, because it's quite accurate. And you can play games with it, so with your partner, your friend, or some of your buddies, get them around for a drink, and you can do some distance control games, which is good fun. This red button at the top, uh, it basically turns the screen off, so you can see what's on it, but you can press the button in your pocket and jump onto another hole. Okay, so let's go out of that, end warm up. The other thing that's quite nice, we've got your tempo training, which is, this is fine. It's kind of working out the tempo of your swing, so you get peeps and you can, when you hit the golf ball, you're going to try and hit it depending on your different level of ability. So the tempo training, you go into here and you can set up whether you're amateur, medium or fast and you can do your back swing, front swing, and then you've got your tempo after it. So, you know, I'm not sure whether that's a, a gimmick or not, but um, there we go. Let's end that. Target practice, I do think is good. You can have two players. So uh, I think it's a great thing. I was playing it with Maddie the other day and we got to the range and we set our targets at 75 yards, 100 yards and 125 yards. And then you just press go. And what you're gonna do is player one comes up and he, he or she hits five shots. And you've got to try and get those five shots to carry 75 yards. Okay, so, and then once you finish that, the other player comes up and does the same. And it's actually a fun game. I really enjoyed that. We had a right laugh playing it. And I would imagine that would be a fun one when you get with your friends, you turn up and uh, you just want to have a little bit of a game. Maybe if you put a few beers on it before you go out. Really good. I, I really like that. Virtual round basically is the same kind of thing, but you can choose a course to play on. So you'd have to hit all the shots. 
And I would say that is good fun if you've got an indoor monitor at home and you basically just want to have a bit of fun. But you can also connect up and have a tournament with other people or pitched against other players in the world. And um, I guess that's pretty much all I can say about it. It plugs in at the back. It's got a little USB port to plug. Um, it's got 41,000 golf courses pre-built into this one. So it should have your golf course and any others that you decide to go and find. I've had a quick look through and all the courses that you would ever probably want are going to be on here. It's got a 15 hour battery life, which is handy, and it doesn't take long to charge up. So if you're like me and you keep forgetting to charge things or you rush to the golf course and you suddenly realize that it's not charging, you can plug it into your car on the way. And as long as it's kind of half an hour to an hour to get there, you can have plenty of juice in it to get yourself around your 18 holes. The screen's pretty clear. I wouldn't say it's the clearest, but to be honest, we're so used to kind of looking at iPhones and these um, super excellent devices, which are very expensive. Um, it's hard to make a comparison with that sort of thing. It's got a touch screen, but you can zoom in, which is a little bit of a, I would say a bit of a con because we're used to kind of zooming in and it's a nice pinch to zoom feature um, that we get on most of these type of things. But um, it's okay though, because we've got a little kind of tapper there that we can go down to zoom in as far as you would need. But it does take a little bit of getting used to not doing that. <laughs> the way it's kind of nice. It's kind of heavy enough to uh, to know you've got something there and it's not too light and flimsy. So weight is absolutely fine. It's about the same weight as a, as a mobile phone. So I would say the troubles, like the troubles with it are basically that it's not quite as good a GPS device as what you would get on your phone and often with a free app. Um, those things are great for zooming in and, and often they, they, they will use Google Maps so you see exactly what you're looking for, exactly the tree you're looking for as opposed to a digitized version that has been put in, rather like this one. I would say the launch monitor feature um, is really good. It's a really good, excellent thing to have. Um, it was accurate. Uh, I've checked it against the Trackman 4 and the GC Quad and it's not really that far out. Sometimes it misses shots, you know, you'll hit a ball and it doesn't pick it up, but you know, you can put up with that considering you're not paying 20,000 quid for it, which is what the uh, GC quad is. So, and it's within five yards either way. So if you're dialing wedges in, maybe that's where it might affect you because a 10 yard spread on a wedge is sort of quite a lot. But I feel like with a five iron or four iron or even you're driving, you're trying to get an idea of how you're striking the ball. And that is actually quite accurate. It's not, it's not too bad at all. The games are great fun. Uh, so that's like a, a really nice little bonus. If you're with a couple of buddies and you're uh, warming up and you want to put a little bit of consequence on it, then you can kind of do a little chip off against your mates or maybe hit some drivers so you can hit them furthest or maybe you can check your wedges. So that's really good. I like that combination of it. So I think as a launch monitor, it definitely gets my thumbs up. Whether or not that is worth the extra money, because uh, good GPS devices are often free out there at the moment on our apps and on our phones, and uh, they're pretty kind of accurate. I mean, they're as accurate as anything else because you're dealing with a mobile phone, which can be up to a, you know, two thousand pounds worth of um, kit anyway. So, I would say that as far as GPS devices is concerned, I'm not such a big fan of this. I found it a little bit hard to work with. I didn't like the way you couldn't pinch to zoom. So that was a little bit, you know, not so good for me. However, it does work. So if you're buying it purely for a launch monitor and that is a bonus thereafter, then that's great. Is a GPS unit, I'm not such a big fan. So it's down to you guys to decide which features you're buying it for or whether it's a little blend of both of them. And obviously you can get these bits of kit secondhand as well now, so that the price tag is gonna come down. So that you know might be a good bit of fun and they do hold their value. So, um, so if you were to buy one and give it a go for a few months and see if you enjoy it, then you can always sell it on to somebody else who wants to give it a go as well. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you've got one and whether you think it's really good or better than anything else you've used. And um, hopefully you enjoyed that review, a little bit of a deep dive into it and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week. Remember to like and subscribe if you're not already.